So we just learned about manifolds. What we want to talk about in this video is the tangent space to a point on a manifold. This is going to be very similar, or more or less a generalization of the tangent plane at a point for a particular surface in R3. But before we talk about that, we have to set up a little bit of notation that relates something that we did before when we spoke about differentials uh, to open sets of Rn. So if we take an open set U in, let's say, Rn, be open, and C, a point in U, the tangent space of U at C is the set T C U. So this is the notation for that set. And what we're essentially doing is just putting in all of the notation and all of the data into one um, mathematical object. And as a set, it's just C cross Rn. But it's also a vector space, and the vector space structure essentially ignores the point C, and it only uses the vector space structure of Rn. So let me explain what I mean explicitly. So recall a vector space consists of a set together with a particular vector, which we think of as the zero vector, and two other very important functions. One of them is the addition function that takes two vectors and spits out another vector. And the other function is it takes a scalar, a real number, and a vector, and it multiplies the two. So it scales a vector by a particular factor. So let me define those, um, those three things here. And even before we uh, set up that structure, uh, we should at least say what elements in here look like. Um, so let, let us denote an element here. Instead of calling it C comma V, we'll denote it by, first of all, we'll use a semicolon sometimes, and we'll write it as V subscript C. So we think of the vector V at the point C. So first of all, the zero vector, C zero, which we write as zero subscript C, is the zero vector. Secondly, the sum of two vectors, Cu plus Cv, is defined to be, in the first coordinate, we leave C alone. We're thinking of C as just a label, and we add the second two components. And third, and by the way, we write this also as Uc plus Vc is defined to be U plus V at C. And thirdly, if we multiply a vector CV by a scalar lambda, then this is the same thing as, or defined to be, C lambda times V. Or in the notation with subscripts, this would read as lambda VC is lambda V at C. So you should check that this defines a vector space. How do we visualize it? Well, if we have an open set, let's say here we have an open subset of the plane, and let's say the point C is somewhere here. Now, this domain U is just a subset of R2 in this case. The tangent space of U at this point C is the entire plane and I'm, I'm drawing it at dashed because I mean to extend this plane out to infinity in both directions, it's the entire plane whose origin is at C. So we overlay on this open set an entire plane. 
and that plane here is T C R N. And in this case, N equals 2. And when we think of a vector in this tangent space, we imagine that this vector emanates from that origin. So this looks like V C, for instance. So this is actually something we've already been used to. Whenever we spoke about the differential of a function defined from one open set into the codomain of some Euclidean space, the differential was defined to be a function from Rn, where n was the domain of definition of that function, into Rm, where Rm was the codomain. And we knew that the differential acted on all vectors, so that the domain of the differential is indeed all of Rn, regardless of what open subset F was defined on. Now, to define the tangent space of a manifold, we do something very similar. So, now our manifolds are subsets, so let's say, let M be a subset of RK, and let's say it's M-dimensional. And also, let's focus on a point C in M. Around any point C in M, we know that we have a coordinate patch, a coordinate system of M about that point. So let's pick one for now. So let, um, let U be an open subset of R M and V an open subset of R K both open and such that so let me just write this here such that C is in V and let phi be a function from U to M intersect V B a parameterization. And let's just call its inverse phi inverse, um, is the inverse. Let me just draw this as a picture. So here's our open set U. Let's say it's two dimensional so that it's easy for me to draw. And phi inverse of C is some point in this domain. Now this is an open subset of some Euclidean space. So, you know, we have some coordinate, coordinates here. Um, and let's say our manifold maybe looks something like, you know, a piece of a hemisphere or something like that. And here's our point C. And this parameterization sort of gives us something that looks like coordinates on our manifold. And this is M, a part of M, um, in RK. Let's say, actually, this is M intersect V. And phi is a function from U to M intersect V. So just looking at this picture and the previous definition, we already know we have a tangent space at the point phi inverse c in Rm. So what we can do is, and phi therefore is a function from some open subset of Rm to Rk. And what we can do is we can take this tangent space, we can calculate the differential of phi, and we can push forward all of the vectors in this tangent space. So here we have this tangent space. At this point, we can calculate the differential, so the differential at the point phi inverse c of phi gives us linear transformation from Rm, but this time using our earlier notation, it's a linear transformation from Tc, sorry, from T phi inverse c of u to and here we have TC, we're viewing it as a subset of RK, so we have TCRK. And this defines an, a K 
by M matrix if we chose, for instance, a basis. So using this linear transformation, we set the tangent space of M at C to be the image of this tangent space, of this vector space, under this linear transformation. So it's D phi inverse C applied to the entire tangent space here. Where for this tangent space, again, since it's an open subset of Euclidean space, it's just this simple mathematical object. So what we're doing is, visually, we're taking this plane and we're pushing it forward here. And it turns out that when you do push this forward, it really is a plane that's tangent to M at the point C, at least locally. But again, the tangent plane is infinite in extent, so we're including all vectors in this plane. And it's a subspace of the tangent space of RK at the point C, and therefore, because it's a subspace, it's also a vector space in its own right. And this vector space is exactly the tangent space of the manifold M at the point C. There's one thing that's not obvious about the definition, and it seems to depend on our choice of parameterization on our coordinate patch. It's a fact that it indeed does not depend on such a coordinate patch. And the reason for this is that although if I change my coordinate patch and I look at, for instance, where basis vectors go, the basis vectors might go to completely different vectors in the image. But when I take the span of those vectors, I will span exactly the same subspace. And for the proof of that, I'll refer you to the notes.